Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a collab video with Elaine from Hmm Makeup and I have a bare face on right now, this is so strange. But um, yeah, so it's an international collab and it came about because I was writing underneath one of her videos and she suggested that perhaps we should do one and I was all for it. So we were writing on Instagram to each other to see what it is that we wanted to do and she had so many ideas because she's such a brainy lady and um, we decided on this video um, she's so many videos on her channel, so many to choose from and for those of you who are a little bit OCD like myself they're all in playlists, I love that. So there's like a little panning section for anyone who watches me I assume is into panning because I'm obsessed with it. There is one series that she set up recently that's so good and I'm not just saying that, it legitimately is so good. Her subscribers or her viewers um, pick the palette a face palette and an eyeshadow palette that she should that, w that she should work on for like two weeks i think it is I'm not sure i think it's two a couple of weeks anyway so she'll give a number and then we when we view the video we, we write in the comments saying what number we pick so we don't actually know and then she'll come back and she'll show what the ones that we picked were and then she'll use it for a while and then she'll come back and she'll do a little review and she'll do some looks excuse me i think that's a really clever idea i've never seen that before brand focus videos which I really enjoy as well because in Ireland you cannot get anything over here. Nothing. And so I can't just buy stuff online without knowing what I'm getting myself into so I like that as well. She's collection videos which I love collection videos. I'm so nosy aren't I? But I love collection videos. She's so many videos. I think she's over 400 videos so if you get into your binge you're going to be binging for a while but it's interesting. She doesn't just keep talking and rambling like I'm doing right now. <laughs> so go check her out. She's Canadian. So I'm interested to see how she gets on in her video. Very exciting. And I'm really thankful that she asked me to do this or suggested that we do this because she's a very patient and I really enjoy her. So let me just play. We'll get into this get ready with me. So it is a chit chat get ready with me. And what we're going to do is we selected 10 questions. We just came up with 10 questions for each other. So as we're doing our faces, we're going to answer those 10 questions. And also, we picked each other's makeup, which I'm assuming is in the title of the video. So, she's picked out some products for me. I sent her photos on Instagram of what I had, and I watched her collection videos and picked something for her. So, isn't this shameful? Like, one or two of these products I have never used. Hence the panning dilemma. So, let's just get into it. I'm assuming this is going to be long. So, my eyebrows are already on. And I'm going to tie my hair up. Okay, so my hair is tied up, my eyebrows are on, and my eyebrows are on because I don't know how long this is going to be because I've never done it before. So I'm just going to jump into the first question that you asked me to get the ball rolling. So her, her first question was, where do I live? And I live in the commuter of Dublin in Ireland, but I'm from South Kilkenny, Waterford border. So the reason why I live in Dublin is because I moved up here in 2010 for college and then I never left because in the area that I work in, they don't really practice it in any other part of the country. It's like all, like most work related things you have to come to Dublin for. I know that's like not necessarily true, but in my profession, that's where it's AM. So that's why I'm here. So the first product she chose, well not the first, but one of the products she chose was the Catrice Camouflage Cream. Now we said that we choose stuff that wasn't necessarily familiar to each other, to ourselves. So this I think is three euros 49. It's really, really affordable and it's a concealer. And I'm just gonna use it to prime my lids before I do anything. And by the way, I'm just winging this. I don't know what I'm at, but I'm enjoying it. So here we go. It's a really affordable concealer and it's better than that MAC pot, which is surprising because like it's a MAC. How much is that gonna cost? You know what I mean? So anyway, yes, I live here since 2010. Like I'm from the middle of nowhere down home home. And this is like where I'm currently at is so populated. So it's it was a really hard to adjust to that situation from having grass everywhere out in the country and like cows and fresh air to like smog. <laughs> I hope no one from Dublin isn't gonna kill me for this one. But no, if you're not used to it, like do you know what I mean? If you're not used to it, each their own. Like it's a lovely, lovely county. And if you were visiting Ireland like obviously you're going to land probably at Dublin airport you might land in Cork but like you're going to land in Dublin any of your shopping situation that's another thing all your shopping must be done <laughs> must be done in Dublin if you're going to do anything so yes yeah, so it's a lovely county it's really populated Stevens Green ha is kind of 
Stevens Green, Grafton Street and O'Connell Street is kind of where everyone goes shopping and whatnot. But it's really nice to go to like the likes of Dunleary or anything like that for fresh air. It's really, it's a lovely county. It's lovely. And then home, home, South Kilkenny. Such a soft spot for my home, home. Hurling is a big thing down there. Does anyone know what hurling is? It's a sport over. It's a sport that we play over here. I don't play it, but um, with a stick essentially and a schlitter, um, and that's what they do there. Let's see. I don't know. I love it. I wouldn't change it. Like when I was younger, I was like, "Get me out! I want to go abroad. I want to travel the world." Still do want to travel, but I, I love where I am. I wish the weather was a little bit nicer, though. Like the weather. It's generally no. Saying that, it is roasting right now. I'm sweating, but. Generally, I don't know why I keep doing this on my eyelids, but <laughs> I've never like, I don't normally talk when I'm doing my makeup, you know? I suppose the one thing that I like about Ireland, I don't know if this happens abroad, but when I go home home, <sighs> sorry, when I go home home and I'm driving my car and the further out into the country I go, the deep into the bowels of it, when I'm driving out, if I pass someone like I'm driving and someone's coming against me, whether they know me or not, we wave at each other. I don't know if you do that where you're from, like up in Dublin, not because it's like a motorway, it's packed. But when you go home home and you drive past a random stranger, you wave at each other. <laughs> you don't know each other, but you'll wave. Do you do that? Does anyone else do that? Yeah, it's, it's really, okay, I know this could be just my opinion, but it, the country's so small, there's 32 counties in it. Um, but it's so family-ish, it's like really community-ish. We don't all have each other's back. I, I mean, I'm like as bad and there's good people everywhere. But like, it's really like, I don't know, it's real like community-ish. Why did I start my YouTube channel? Well, the reason why I started my YouTube channel is because I was panning, was I panning? No, I had an Instagram and I'm just obsessed, obsessed with makeup and like, no one really is obsessed with it as much as I am in my personal life. So I want, I kept going online seeking that satisfaction of makeup, makeup, makeup. So I started my Instagram and I was panning on that. I was watching panning, there's a man outside. I was watching panning videos like constantly, all the time, all day, every day. Well, not when I was working, but you get the, you get the gist of it. By the way, next product she chose, next two products she chose was the Anastasia Norvina palette and the Kevin Aquan Electro Pop. And I got both of these online. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm just gonna owing it. So yes, I was doing it on Instagram and I loved doing it on Instagram. I still love watching it on Instagram. The only problem I had was that I had so much to say and I couldn't fit it into a post. And I was just, I didn't have the confidence to do it on YouTube because YouTube is great, but you, you see all the drama that's there too. And like, I do not have the mental health capacity to deal with the fallout of that kind of stuff. But I loved it and I was, I loved the idea of it and I wanted to do it and I didn't have the cojones to go about doing it. But I really wanted to do it. Um, so three years go by, I'm still doing it on Instagram, still don't have the cojones to do it uh, on YouTube. And then I was going out with my boyfriend. This shade looks like a bruise. I cannot work it, it's so, but we'll just, we'll just go with it. So anyway, yeah, so I was going out of pork and he was like, you know, if you love it so much, why don't you do it? And I was kind of like, well, one, I'm going to have to hear my own voice. Two, what if someone says something to me? Like, what if someone slags me? I'd be so embarrassed. Because like, I don't know anyone in my personal life that has a YouTube channel. Um, yeah, so then he was like, well, feck it. Sorry, just do it. Like, And I was like, yeah, you're right. So that was in January, I think, the end of January. And so I was writing on Instagram to Rebecca Morgan, Stephanie from the Daisy Girly, Alexi, she was so helpful. She even helped me with like software. Like I hadn't a bull's notion what to do. I had a clue. And I thought that was so helpful because I hadn't an, an idea where to start and I knew that I loved it so much and I just wanted to do it. So spoke to them, gave me an idea of where, where to go, got a camera. Park was really nice and he went halves with me on a camera. And he doesn't even use it, how sweet is that? But anyway, did that, started it and here we are. So what's the next question? Anything you feel you've done particularly well and anything you would do differently if I was to start anew? Or anything I feel I've done particularly well? I don't think I feel I've done anything particularly well because I'm learning. I think what I've done particularly well is the 
is just the fact that I did it at all. And what I find is I have such a hectic schedule. I'm sure everyone does, but I find it so hard to do everything. The fact that I'm able to even get videos up on a remotely consistent basis is something that I'm proud of. Even though it's not that consistent, like I do have one a week, but like making time for that, just just the fact that I'm doing it, not necessarily I'm doing that particularly well. And anything I would do differently if I was to start again? Hmm. Anything would I do differently if I was to start again? Uh, no, I think everyone just learns as they go. I wouldn't do it anything differently because I'm still learning. Like, I don't know what I'm at. But who does? It's just a bit of fun. I'm just, I'm literally in escapism. I'm sitting in front of a camera. There's no one here talking about makeup and using it up. Harmless, you would think, but there's there'd be drama all over the place. But that's my reason for it. So, no, there's nothing I would like to, to if I was to do it again. I think, though, if I... Or maybe one thing, you don't need to have a big fancy camera. I mean, I see people doing it with their iPhone and they have they do such a good job. So if they can do it with their iPhone, you can do it with your iPhone. You know what I mean? Okay, I really like the Norvina palette, but like seriously, that shade soul. I need a better blending shade in here than that. You know, but the whole palette itself is beautiful. I got it for Christmas. Pee wee! What's next? Do you have or had any pets? And if so, tell us about them. Oh my God, oh my God, winning. So I just keep blending this eyeball, like what am I doing? <laughs> Who am I? Okay, so I obviously not where I'm at currently because I'm gone at least 12 to 13 hours of the day. So I don't know if that would necessarily be fair. But when I was living at home home with my mama and my daddy and my brother, uh, we had we had a dog. Okay, we had a few different animals. We had 700 billion cats over the years. My last cat, she died, but her name was Puss. <laughs> How innovative and creative was I? <laughs> Puss! Oh my god, she was amazing. She was so independent. She looked, she looked at you like you were beneath her and that she was plotting to rule and kill the world. You know, that's what she, but she was so affectionate, you know. <laughs> anyway, who I really want to talk about, no offense to any other animal I've ever had, I love them all. I had a Pomeranian, a little teeny tiny Pom, and her name was Winnie, and she was ginger and fluffy. <laughs> she was so fluffy. She passed away last year. She um, had a heart attack, would you believe? But um, yeah, her name was Winnie. <laughs> Winifred when she was bald, <laughs> and she was so like a teenage girl. She was so dramatic. She had such a fierce personality for such a tiny animal. Like she would just get so angry at people. It was so funny. So cute and beautiful. And when I would come home from Dublin, she, when I'd, I'd open the front door and I'd go, where's my baby? And she's crooked teeth. And you can hear the little tiny feet going. And she'd come, she'd come as far as it, she'd look at you. She'd do a human smile, which I thought was odd. And her teeth would be all crooked and underbite, waiting for you to like pick her up and give her like hug and kiss. And then like she'd sit beside you and she'd sit on the couch in the sitting room and when myself, my mom, my brother or dad or whoever would be talking, she'd be looking at whoever's speaking and making eye contact like she was a part of the conversation. She's so funny. And if you said something wrong, like if you said something, I don't know, it looked like she was disappointed in <laughs> you. Oh God. And mom, she's so small. Mom, my mom is tiny, like she's four foot 11. And mom stepped on her one time by accident. And uh, <laughs> she threatened mom to bark because like, she doesn't like being a dog. And she's like, Oof. And then she gave mam silent treatment then. She would talk to mam. <laughs> she would talk to mam and mom. And mam would talk back to two of them. were hilarious. So they're in the sitting room, sitting on the couch. And uh, Winnie sat up on the couch. She she backed up into mam. She was too small to climb up onto the couch. And mam put her up on the couch beside her because that was her seat beside mam. And uh, she backed her bum up into mam but refused to look at mam. So she was like this. Wanting the, she's like a girl in a relationship or whoever, if you're in a relationship and you give whoever you're with the silent treatment, but you want the attention. <laughs> so, she, so she'd look at mom and she'd be so annoyed at her, but she wanted mom to say sorry to her. So she'd shimmy into mom. Mom, mom wouldn't give out if they died. The two of them are just as bad. And, um, and then uh, mom would say, give her a little rub. And then Winnie would look up at her. And then like mom would give her a kiss and a hug and say sorry. And then they're friends again. <laughs> Oh, I loved her. And we also had, like, my my uncle's dog, uh, Heidi, 
Well, she was like a Springer Spaniel and so it was kind of like shared custody because um, Heidi would be in our house as well as Tom's house. So Heidi had, Heidi was obsessed with dad, like just obsessed with my dad. So I loved her as well. And I could go into all the animals I've had over the years, but I'd be here for the day. I don't even know how long this video is. <laughs> okay. Okay. So how does it, how does being an Ireland based YouTuber make you different than what we think of when we think of a typical YouTuber? How does being, that is a tough question. It's very hard to answer questions and try and think of what to do with your eyes at the same time. Oh my God, I don't like this shade. <laughs> I don't like it. It's too late now. How, let me just narrow that down. What is it? How does being an Ireland based YouTuber make me different than what we think of a typical YouTuber? Okay, I don't know if this is a controversial thing to say, but when I think of a typical, typical YouTuber, I think American, you know? Like there's loads of, there's loads of people everywhere making YouTube videos. But when I was watching, like when I started watching YouTube, everyone was American at the time. Like this was years ago. I'd be watching Marlena, you know, from The Makeup Geek, Kathleen Lights, Jacqueline Hill, Laura Lee, the whole shebang as you went, you know. And then it was after that, then everyone else started kind of coming out that I was aware of. I didn't see anyone else at the time. Hello. So one sec now before I interrupt myself. I'm pulling out the Electro Pop by Kevin Aquan. And I'm going to go in with, look how unused this looks, with this shade here, down here, this purple shade. Um, sometimes, sorry for blinding you, you can put down that black shade up there and put any shade on top of it to transform your look. Just saying, if you have it. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's what I think of as a typical YouTuber, even though like Elaine is Canadian and I'm really interested to hear what she has to say about that because I really want to go to Canada. But yeah, I think of like an American, because <clears throat> that's how it started for me. Everyone I watched was from America, not now. And I think of like real professional and like American products that you can't get over here. And, you know, well, you can't get anything over here. Let's face it, you can't. This is not coming up well. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So you think of them. That's who I think of with the American, the products that you can get with Sephora and like Ulta and Marshall and all these places that we don't have over here and like CoverGirl, we don't have any of that. And like over here, you know, it's a completely different story. So that's what I think when I think of like YouTuber and like real professional, like not necessarily professional, but you know, like it was the norm over there. And I always wanted to go and see Walmart. But um, yeah, so that's what I think of. Whereas over here, it's kind of like very niche. I don't think, other than Linda from Linda, is it Linda Loves Panning? I've been watching Linda since she started, I think. But other than her, I'm not aware of anyone in Ireland that does project panning. I've seen a few people on Instagram. So how, how does that make me unique? I suppose perhaps we're the only people who do project panning that are from Ireland. I don't know. Well, on YouTube, if anyone knows an Irish, an Irish project panner other than Linda, because I love Linda, let me know. Because I would like to watch them and support them. And you know, I'd like to start doing videos that show brands you can kind of get here instead of always having to ship stuff, you know? Like that gets so frustrating. It just makes it different because I'm Irish, I suppose. What's the next question? Blah, blah, blah. Pets, can you share with us one of the passions you have outside of YouTube and why are you passionate about it? Well, I'm going to be brutally honest. I don't have time for anything else because at the moment I work so, so much. But I'm absolutely obsessed with singing. I love singing. Sang a lot as a teenager and I absolutely love it. And as you, if you watch my videos, you'll see me humming away and humming and hawing. But I can never sing. Since I don't know enough about YouTube yet, I can never sing kind of what I want to sing because I'm afraid I'm gonna get like a copyright strike if I want to sing. Like I get, I'm gonna say the words rather than to sing the words, but anytime I mention a product and you know there's a theme tune of it like on the TV or like because you're worth it and I, I so desperately want to sing that right now because you're worth it. But uh, I'd be afraid I get a copyright strike. But yeah, I absolutely love singing, and I love water sports. So I got my scuba diving license when I like a paddy license when I was 15, I think, 15 or 16, and I got it in Kerry in Castle Gregory with my dad. We went and did it together. Look at that. This is why I did my eyes first, because I just fell everywhere. That purple Norvina shallow shadow looks like a bruise. Come on. We're going to have to fix that. Right, we're just going to try to fix it. I'm going to go in with love this like pastel matte pink. 
That shade is ridiculous. I've used that shade several times now and I just can't. Every other shade I've used is beautiful. Yeah, so scuba diving is something I really, really enjoy. <laughs> this eyeshadow look is terrible. <laughs> On camera, like. Um, scuba diving, I love scuba diving. It's like being in a different world when you're underwater because one, your vision is off by 30%. You don't know what you're touching. Two, the volume. If you, you can hear people calling you, but you can't tell if it's left, right, up or down. It's good for mental health because it's so relaxing. It, it does take a little bit to get used to if you're terrified of it, like if you're terrified. It's good exercise as well. And it's, just, it's something that it doesn't feel like exercise and I hate, obviously. Like I wish there was more things I liked that much, but the weather in Ireland is so cold that it's very, especially underwater, the visibility would be terrible. But yeah, scuba diving and singing. Right, do your friends and family know you have a channel? And if so, why do, what do they think? And if not, why not? So. My mom knows I have a chat. Mom, dad, and Paul. Mom, dad, Paul. That's my immediate family. Porik. Porik knows. Um, a few of the girls in work know. A few of my friends. Like, I definitely would not post it on my, my Facebook page because I'd be a little bit nervous about being slagged. I'm kind of embarrassed. I don't know. I don't know why. I'd just be afraid about being slagged about it. I don't know why. Yet and all, when I tell people in work, if it just comes up, oh, sorry, I can't do that. I have to go edit a video. And they're like, oh, you have a YouTube channel. And they're really polite about it. And I'd be like, yeah. And I have no problem with that whatsoever. But yet and all, I don't have, I'm not brave enough to put it on my Facebook because I'm being honest, I would be afraid I'd get a slagging. I'm just going to try and fix this God eyeshadow got off of wood. But uh, yeah, I'm not brave enough to put it on my Facebook, but I have told people uh, in passing, but like, that's kind of it. I, oh my God, this is terrible. But yeah, I, that's all I've told. I'd like, And I'm also really embarrassed to film in front of anyone. Like, So Pork is in the other room right now watching Game of Thrones and I can't hear it. So I'm almost paranoid he's listening or something, even though I never shut up talking. This is a holy, holy show of an eyeshadow situation. Okay, so that answers that. I don't really mind them knowing, but no, not brave enough for Facebook. I do put it on my Instagram. That's a step. I do put it on my Instagram. Okie dokie. The next question is, what is one thing I'd hope to achieve in 10 years time? And it could be like your personal life channel, whatever. 10 years time, how old will I be in 10 years time? I will be 36 in 10 years time, turning 37 in a week. So by then I'll hope to have my, decide what it is I'm doing with my job. Like I'm doing a work, I, can't, I don't really know if I'm allowed to say what I work at, so I'll just leave that out. But I hope to have the exam sat in relation, the, the rest of the exam sat in relation to the job. Um, I, I'm hopeful that I'll have a house, like I'm renting at the moment, but I'm hoping that I'll have like, I don't want a mortgage, I just want to be paying, but yeah, a mortgage. I'd want my own house where I can renovate, you know, I want my own house, 36. I'd like to have children, not children, plural, but like maybe a child, I'd like to be married. I don't know what's going on, like, but yeah, I'd like to be married, have a kid, or at least be on the road to having a child, be a bit more settled. God, oh my God, these are serious questions to think of, isn't it? Career. If I could really choose, I'd have my own, I'd be my own boss. In relation to YouTube, I love YouTube, it's a hobby, I really enjoy it but it's a hobby for me. If I could make a few shillings just to be able to like put back into my channel to like get lights or something, you know, that kind of thing, just grow. I'd like to grow. Like, you know, it's fun. It's nice seeing your subscribers going up because you're like, wow, someone is watching me and not because they have to, they're not trying to be polite. It's not like your family member where they're looking at it to like support you. Like they're choosing to because they want to. So I'd like to have more people that like want to because it's such a compliment and the amount of hours that you put in to do it, so I'd love that. The next product is the Inglot HD Foundation, and this is my pale shade, and it's in the shade 79. It is a full coverage foundation, medium full coverage. I love this foundation. I'm currently using the, the darker version of this, but I'm very pale right now. I should really do my, I'm just jumping around the face, but I don't normally, it's just because I've never <laughs> filmed myself doing this at the same time. And so it's actually quite difficult to multitask. Oh my God, what is wrong with this? Why is this doing this? The tanned one doesn't. So that answers that question. Where do I see in 10 years time? I'd like my channel to grow. Uh, it doesn't have, like, I wouldn't like to be, like just enough where, I don't really know how much, just stead, slow and steady, you know? So that, it, so that all you're doing is not necessarily in vain. 
you know, people want to watch. Don't really know. Like, 10 years is a long time, in fairness. So by then, you'd, I suppose, it'd be great if you didn't have to work and you could do it. But then part of me, like, I love my job. And I've spent years and years in education to get to the, how far I am in my career to just not, you know. But yeah, family, house. Family house, or at least a plan for that. Um, oh, I want to figure out a way where I can have my own pet now again and not feel guilt, like find a way where I can work and have a pet, you know, so that it's not mean. Because I love having an animal, like in my own house, but then it's a responsibility again, you know, one thing at a time. What is one thing you, if you had one tip for your viewers, your best tip for either makeup application or managing your makeup collection, what would it be? Okay, well, as you can see for makeup application, I'm not great. <laughs> I just do what I have to do. But um, we'll come back to that one. In relation to managing my collection, I actually do have a tip for that. Okay, so as some of you may know, when I was in college, I had very, very limited space for storage. Now, I mean, my bedroom had a bed in it and that was it. No wardrobe, no nothing. There was no space for anything else. So I would have a bag of my clothes. It's not terrible. But anyway, I was happy. I was paying for it, you know. No one else was paying for it, so I was proud. Um, and I had a shoebox, uh, an empty shoebox, and I would put my makeup in the shoe. What am I doing? Like, I'm supposed to be tapping this in the shoebox. And so I'd end up having duplicates of things, not, not using my makeup because I didn't know what I had. So if you do have the space, if you live in Ireland and you get in Aldi when you're going food shopping, grocery shopping, your mushrooms come in a little container. If you can't afford storage, you know, like a little plastic container to store your food in. I clean it out and I used it for makeup. But if you can organize, I don't know if this is the case for everyone, but for me, when I was able to organize my collection in such a way where I knew what I had, I did not buy as much. I got this thing in Ikea. I think it's a flower pot and I put my lip pencils in it. And like some of them are pork made and some of them I got in like repurposed stuff. So I suppose for managing your collection, Organize as much as you can with the space that you have so that you see what you have so you don't keep buying stuff and Organize what else managing my collection. I suppose if you're not into project panning Just give a go trying to use up a product just so you get an appreciation of how long the thing takes Because I've been on a low buy for th this is my third year And not because I have to now just because I'm conscientious. It's just become a part of me What is your biggest makeup habit pet peeve? Makeup habit pet peeve. I'd say a lot of people are like annoyed now how I fly my makeup. But makeup habit pet peeve. I know a makeup pet peeve that I have, and that is you know when you buy products. Sorry now. This is the Inglot pigment in the shade 112 that she that Elaine chose. Oh look at it. William. Yeah, so makeup pet peeve would be you know packaging of like eyeshadow palettes and whatnot. And there's mismatched shapes in there. Holy mother of the divine Lord. That drives me mental. I don't buy it for that reason. You know, like a palette this size, say. And it has like a random square, a rectangle, a circle. Like, that will give me anxiety. I just can't deal with it. So, no, that's a makeup pet peeve. And mascara that's too wet. And it just goes everywhere. That drives me up the wall as well. But... Makeup habit pet peeve. I don't think I have any. I just enjoy it so much that I suppose to each their own. If that if if it makes you happy, you do it. Like who cares really? It's just makeup. It's not a big deal, in my opinion. Like everyone has something. If it drives you mad, it drives you mad. If it doesn't, what well, harm? I have enough things in driving me mad now without that something else here driving me mad. This next product is the Inglot Under Eye Concealer. The Inglot Under Eye Concealer in the shade 91. This is something I'm guilty of not using and I have it for like two years. Isn't that shameful? Yes, it is. By the way, I'm not sure on the cruelty-free status of Inglot and I've looked it up. So if someone is interested in letting me know, I would greatly appreciate it. I like Inglot a lot. It's similar to MAC. It's something that is accessible for me. So that's why I enjoy getting it. The, the products are expensive, but not that too expensive. Anyway, I think where I was at, why am I using this? I think where I was at was makeup pet peeves. And I don't have a makeup habit pet peeve, but I have pet peeves in relation to makeup. And another one of those would be, you know, drugstore makeup. Over here, by the way, we call a drugstore a chemist, even though a pharmacy, like. 
um, would be drugstore products. Like I bought drugstore products because one, I wanted to, two, I, th I could not afford high-end products and why should I have to? You know, just because it's ex expensive doesn't mean it's better. No, I enjoy high-end products. I love high-end products. I love products if they're good. It doesn't matter about the price if I can afford them. But what annoys me is I go into the chemist drugstore and buy something, right? Grant. And then I run out of that something and I go back and I'm like, yep, that's going to be six euros because that's how much it was. It was six quid. And now it's like 10 euros. And you're like, what? You've gone up? Sorry, there's children outside playing. And yeah, that annoys me. Like I, I bought a L'Oreal eyeshadow palette. L'Oreal, years ago. It's not even great. Like, I'm not going to lie, the pigmentation is terrible. It is not good. Some of the products are good, some of the products are bad. But this particular thing, it was, it was crap. It was a load of crap. And it was 20 quid. 20 quid for a drugstore product. Like, I might as well just wait until I have another 20 quid. If I can afford the first 20 quid, I can surely wait till I have the next 20 quid and buy a bloody high-end one that I wanted in the first place. You know what I mean? This is really nice. I have a, I have um, really crepey under eyes. I'm really surprised that this is actually working out. So, yeah, like it really annoys me how much the prices are going up. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like the prices just keep going up. Why are they called drugstore prices if they're not drugstore prices? You know. Now, if you can get stuff online, that's grand. But like, you know, you don't have to always. You want to go into your chemist and get something. Now, so next question from Elaine who I really enjoy from Canada I really can't wait to see what she has to say about Canada if you're to start your makeup collection all over again what would you do differently I think I didn't answer that because my camera shut off Elaine chose the or CMA no color powder and she also chose and or the NARS translucent powder I haven't used this yet god I'm so atrocious but yeah I haven't used it yet I've heard people give out about the package <coughs> about the packaging. So I'm just gonna try this one out. Oh my God, how do people do this? Look at this. Okay, this is quite affordable though. Well, it was for me. What would I do differently? I would, if I buy a product, if I'm starting my collection all over again, if I'm starting to get seriously into makeup, if I buy a liquid lipstick, do not go and buy another liquid lipstick in the exact same kind of shade until I try this one for sure and see if I like it. I had a habit of just buying and buying and buying and buying like a mother pucker. Plucker of a mother. Kept buying things non-stop and not using them. You know, and I wanted it all. Just kept buying it three euros. That's three euros. I can afford three euros. And I just kept buying it. So now I would use something to, not necessarily completion, but for at least two weeks consistently, at least two weeks to a month consistently, to see if it, if it, if it's something that I actually, <gasps> what is up with this packaging? Oh my God, this is terrible. I'm going to have to put this into other packaging. I'm currently using the Laura Mercier translucent powder. So when that one's all gone, I will transfer this into that. But I like how it's going. I'm just, I'm trying to kind of bake, but it's just not happening. After filming this video, I certainly have a greater appreciation for people who film Get Ready With Me because it's extremely difficult to talk and think about what it is I'm doing. I'd use what I have. So the next thing I have is she chose, Elaine chose a Makeup Revolution bronzer. So I have the Vivid I have loads of them, but I have the Vivid Baked Bronzer in Golden Days. I think this cost me, it broke, $4.99. This is a shimmery, not shimmery, but a glowy bronzer, and I love it. And she also chose the Sleek Contour Kit if I wanted in the shade Light. So this is where we're at on this Sleek Contour Kit. You know what I mean? For those panners and you look at the pan, look at it. But um, this isn't great. And the reason why it's not great is because look how fair I am. And this isn't, it's not dark enough. It ain't dark enough. It ain't dark enough. You know when people click to watch makeup collection videos, right? They just click on it. So clearly they want to see the makeup collection. If the title says highlighter collection or something like that. I love seeing people's collections. I love it because you get little reviews. You get to see what things look like in kind of in real life, if you will. 
And then there'll be a big load of abusive comments underneath it saying, you had too much, you know, you've got too much. And you know, so what, who cares? They're buying it with their own shilling, their own money. What difference does it make? That's the first thing. Like it's their own money. They're not, that's what they choose to buy. So be it girl, you do you. Like for instance, I don't really buy that much clothing or you know, bags or jewelry, but makeup was my thing, you know? So, and then the other thing about that is, you know, you clicked on it, so clearly you wanted to know how much they have. So why be mean? I don't understand. I really like Makeup Revolution bronzers. I'm just doing what I can do right now to get this face did. I'm not happy with this makeup look, I have to say, because I can't see for some reason can't see what I'm doing. So if any of you have not actually seen Elen's videos, which I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, it's actually well worth going over there and giving it a look. So the next product that Elen chose was my Tarte Blush Bazaar palette. And I'm like, look at this. Rumor has, oh my God, I sang. I said I wouldn't do that. So I got this for Christmas in 2017 off Porik and I love it. And I can't get Tarte over here. Um, like you can't go into the shop, so you have to order it online. And I wanted this. For a couple of years every time it would come out and I never got it. So this is my favourite shade as you can see because it's a shimmery shade and I'm going to use that again. I know that's terrible but I love it. Glowy, 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 glowy. Another product that she chose for like highlighting was the Becca palette. Oops, a daisy, look this fell out. This is the Ocean Jewels highlighter palette and as far as I know it was limited edition and there's one shop in Ireland that sells Becca, Becca that I'm aware of. It's called Space NK on Grafton Street. There we go. And it has, it, it's a lovely shop, but there's really nothing, like it's only a very, very small counter. It has very limited products there. So that's like, I'll go in for a wander, but it doesn't have a lot in there. So I haven't used this many times because I've been panning for the last two years, three years, two to three years, and I keep using the same product to completion, but I'm working on it. So what will we use? What, how pigmented is this one? <gasps> Holy God. Okay, I think that that could potentially be too dark. Well, let's just go for it. We're at home. Who's going to see me? <laughs> Everyone. Okay. Hmm. God, such nice colors. I really like this one, but I have a fear that it's too dark. Maybe I could use the dark one as a blush topper and then go from there. Anyway, back to the story that I was about to tell you. I was in work the other day, right? And one of the girls, she really likes makeup, but she's not like psycho on it like I am and she said to me which I think this is a good question you should ask yourself Steph what is your favorite makeup brand for eyeshadow in high end that is such a hard question so my response to that was and I couldn't believe this coming out of my mouth this is just out of what I've tried I said Huda Beauty for Holy Carp for shimmer because I really enjoy I keep that's just where I'm at right now it's my favorite right now and Anastasia Beverly Hills for matte and she was like oh but I heard Anastasia has like a load of fallout and I said I love that not falling on your eye like the powderiness of it I was like I love it and then she said what's your favorite brand for eyeshadow or whatever in the drugstore now bear in mind, we don't have Colourpop over here. So just base that off something that you can fit, not order online. She said, I don't want to have to order it online. She said, something handy. I just want to walk into the shop and get something. What would it be? What brand would it be? How hard of a question is that? And, and I didn't know. I was like, Makeup Revolution? I think I said Makeup Revolution, but out of everything, what brings you the most excitement? And I was like, makeup revolution. <gasps> Who am I? That's not even easily accessible. It's accessible, all right, but it's not easily, it's not as accessible as like Maybelline. Right, I'm just gonna do my mascara and come back. Elin, my lady. I really like her. I'm not just saying that, I actually really do. She's so helpful. I wrote on one of her videos. Was that her video? I think it was. Yeah, it was. Right, I'm terrible at skincare, but I did do my skincare before I did this video. And I wrote under a video about some skincare related query. And oh my God, the response that I got was so informative. 
was so helpful. Now, I didn't have the brand that she mentioned over here, but I had so much information on it that I had enough knowledge on, on how to brave on going and buying something because I don't know if this happens over in um, the US or Canada or Norway or whatever it is, there, or in Europe, anywhere, wherever you're from. If, when you go to a counter and someone comes up to try and help you and you feel like you're under pressure to just buy something even though you can't afford it, you know? Whereas I had enough knowledge from Elaine to go in and get something for my face. And I did do that. I went in and I got some stuff for my face based off of her recommendations. And oh my God, I am so happy with this. It, I ended up getting the, what did I get? I got the Ola Hendrickson products for your face. Not all of them, I can't afford all of them right now. Bit by bit, girl. And it was amazing. It's doing me wonders. You know those people, like I have hooded eyes, you know those people that have loads of eye space to play with, like Alexi. She's so much eye space. I'm like, oh, isn't that the weirdest compliment to give someone? Girl, you've got such great eyelid space. <laughs> I have said that to people. You've got such great eyelid space. What else do I need to do? So Elaine said that I could pick any MAC lipstick. Right, so what I'm gonna go with is, I'm gonna go with the Matte Forever by MAC Forever. This is the MAC Lip Liner in Night Moth. It's the nearest to an odd purpley shade that I have. And then the and or the NARS Pressed Translucent Powder. I'm using that with my Morphe face brush. What shade are you? What brush are you? You're E1. If anyone recommends a good face brush, will you let me know? Because I used to love this, but it's real dense. So if you're applying loose powder, I'm not setting everywhere. Because yes, I have oily skin, but it is weird right now and parts of it are just like really dry. And so I'm only doing in bits. So in relation to this product, I really enjoy it. It's a pressed powder, obviously translucent, but it is not necessarily better than anything that is cheaper. Just saying. This here is my finished makeup look. Thanks Elaine for doing this collab with me. I really enjoyed it. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching my get ready with me. Thanks Mel for watching.